Those of you following the Duluth news have probably already heard about the collapse of the roof of the Miller Hill Mall under snow load. And for those who haven't, it's a lot of snow. The extent of the collapse is about 80 feet by 40 feet. And what we're interested in knowing is how much snow load was actually on that roof and what do we design these things for today? The standard I'll be referring to is the ASCE 7, and this is the 2022 edition. And interestingly enough, snow load has actually changed very significantly in this last edition compared to even just one year ago. So let's talk about flat roof snow loads and how to calculate them. We denote the flat roof snow load with this PF, and it's going to be an equation that considers exposure of our roof, any thermal factors of the roof itself, and then also our ground snow load. And obviously that's going to be a big player. The last term in here, that 0.7, is just accounting for the differences in accumulation of snow on the ground versus on an elevated surface such as the roof. And in general, elevated surfaces are going to have less snow than the ground itself. Digging a bit deeper into our snow load factors, this is where we can really see what affects how much snow will accumulate on our flat roof. And that first one is going to be the exposure factor, CE, and that accounts for the surface roughness or terrain around my building, plus any coverings that are nearby. So that could be trees or other large buildings that are blocking snow from falling onto my roof. Looking at the surface roughness categories, we can see there's categories B, C, and D, and then a few special cases. Don't ask me where case A went, but B is rough terrain. That would be urban settings, suburban settings, or settings where you have lots of woodland or something like that. C is going to be a relatively clear or possibly rolling hills sort of terrain. And D is going to be very, very flat, which is often say water flat. Among those cases, we can look at fully exposed, partially exposed or sheltered buildings. Most buildings are going to be in the partially exposed case because you're gonna have some nearby structures that can block snow. And even if you have, for example, equipment or some elevation changes on your roof, that would still be considered partially exposed. So for the Miller Hill Mall, it's in a suburban area, which would be category B, and then it's gonna be partially exposed. There's other buildings around the area, and plus there's equipment and other stuff on the roof. So we're looking at a factor of 1.0 for that structure. Our second factor is the thermal factor, and this accounts for effectively the heat and insulation on the roof, which affects how much snow can melt or accumulate on that roof. So there's a couple different special cases in here, but most of the time, if you're dealing with an unventilated roof, like a flat roof, you're gonna go down to the second table, table 733, which tells you how much insulation you have and what that's going to tell you in terms of your factor CT. Now, in general, this thermal factor will also depend on your ground snow load. So effectively how much snow you're getting in that particular region. And though we haven't found that yet, I'm gonna spill the beans a little bit. In Duluth, we have a lot of snow. So we're going to be in this greater than 70 pounds per square foot category. And I'm gonna be generous with the Miller Hill Mall and say that we have an R factor of 30 for our roof. And so therefore our CT value is going to be 1.1 for this particular building. So how is it that I actually knew that our ground snow load was bigger than 70 pounds per square foot? We're going to use the ASCE 7 hazard tool to find out. And this tool is a relatively new tool that's been added and is freely accessible online that really helps us find our ground snow loads throughout the United States. First, we need to enter our address. So we need the Miller Hill Mall in Duluth. There it is, and we'll zoom right in on it. There we can see the mall itself. And I'm interested in looking at the most recent version of the code. So we'll use the 2022 version. Our risk category, I'm gonna select that as three. That seems appropriate for a mall, which is going to have the very high possibility of loss of life if this event happens, for example, during working hours. Fortunately, that didn't happen, so there was no injuries in this event. Soil site class is specific for seismic design, so we don't need to specify that. I'm just looking for snow properties. And so let's view the results for that. And here we see that we have a total snow load of 89 pounds per square foot, which is again, a pretty good snow load for ground snow load. Now let's go ahead and plug in some values so I can find my design flat roof snow load PF. And again, it's 0 0.7 times the exposure factor, the thermal factor and my ground snow load. So if I plug in the numbers for that, we found our exposure factor was 1.0 and our thermal factor I'm guessing is about 1.1 and our ground snow load is 89 pounds per square foot. And this comes out 
to be about 68.5 pounds per square foot of snow on my flat roof. That's pretty sizable, but how does that measure up to the actual snow load that we saw on the Miller Hill Mall? First, I'll preface this in that we don't exactly know how much snow load was on that roof at the time of collapse, nor do we actually know the design capacity of that roof unless we dig into those historical documents from 50 or 60 years ago when this thing was actually designed. But did it see up to 68 pounds per square foot? I'm gonna say that is definitely possible. First of all, we need to consider the density of snow and density of snow is a hard thing to track down because of course you can have light fluffy snow or wet dense snow, or on another level, you can have snow that's melted and then refrozen and melted again and refrozen, which is probably what we're dealing with here. In Duluth, oftentimes we assume that our snow weighs about 25 pounds per cubic foot, but on the upper end of the density, if you have thawed and frozen snow, it can be up to about 30 pounds per cubic foot. Now, the depth of the snow on that roof is probably about two feet, so two feet times 30 is going to get you up to about 60 pounds per square foot on that roof. And so it is not unreasonable to say that this roof could have carried 68 or more pounds per square foot of snow load. If you're curious about the total quantity of snow that fell into the Miller Hill Mall during that collapse, let's run some numbers for that. The collapse was about 40 feet by 80 feet in dimensions. And if we multiply that by 68.5 pounds per square foot, you're looking at about 220 thousand pounds. So in engineering speak, we'll sometimes say that's 220 kips or about 110 tons of snow on the upper end. Now, in reality, that amount of snow might vary from about perhaps 80 tons to maybe a little bit more to 120 tons. So as a ballpark number, about 100 tons of snow in the Miller Hill Mall is a pre pretty reasonable estimate. And that wraps up our discussion of flat roof snow loads. Yes, in Duluth, we get a lot of snow. So oftentimes our designs for gravity loads on roofs is going to be controlled by that massive amount of snow load. and. The design standards have changed a lot in the last 50 years and even pretty significantly in the last year. So I hope you learned something from this video. Please like and subscribe and I will see you next time.